Hi everybody and welcome back to part three of the Great Wall Hobbies 144 scale Victor. In this part we'll focus on getting all the final bits and pieces attached to the airframe so all the smaller air intakes, aerials etc, the fuel tank for the underside uh, where the bomb bay used to be, uh, get the horizontal tailplane together, uh, a little bit of filling on that, We'll get some of the masking done and basically have the airframe ready to go to primer. Uh, so this part will be pretty much all the assembly complete. So this base, uh, I've, I've sped it up because th there's quite a few small little components to be done. So, uh, so basically we're focusing on getting the clear parts attached, the canopy, uh, the the gun site that'll actually get painted over as it was on, on many of the victors. Uh, we're getting all the small intakes and aerials, the small part for the nose, the refueling probe on the top of the fuselage. So all these parts are removed from the sprue and then the attachment points uh, carefully cleared up as usual. Uh, here I'm just checking the fit on that. Uh, Bombay door, which was actually a fuel tank door on the, the tanker variant. Running some extra thin around the edge, making sure it nicely sits in. So now I'm cleaning up the clear part on the underside of the nose using a UMP thinny stick. Uh, a little bit of a step on this. Uh, I'm not too worried about having it buffed up because this will actually be painted over uh, the glass. Uh, parts weren't actually needed on the tanker version, so many of them completely painted over. Uh, now going around checking some of the other seams, the, the the Bombay door, not the best fit, probably one of the, one of the few parts I was a little bit disappointed with on this kit, didn't fit as well as everything else. But again, it's just a case of going around with a UMP sander, make sure it's blended in as well as possible. Of course, much of this is not going to be visible on the, the final aircraft unless you pick it up. Uh, so I'm not overly concerned about it, but obviously want it to be as flush as I can possibly get it. The canopy area itself around the where it joins the fuselage, that's given a bit of a sanding as well, just to make this make sure there's a smooth transition. Uh, I, this is probably one area where I made, made a little bit of a mistake on the kit. That the sanding dust does unfortunately get on the inside of the canopy glass, uh, which I should have really masked. There's a small opening on the top. I should have masked that over. So now I'll move on to the horizontal tail plane, uh, which consists of uh, four parts, basically. Uh, there's a little bit of cleanup on the, the sprue gates and uh, attachment points. Uh, so there's a, the main upper part, lower part and kind of a uh, forward and aft section to go on that. So this is one of the few parts that actually I was a little bit disappointed with in this kit. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap around some of the parts. Uh, even kind of squeezing them together with some extra thin didn't quite close the gaps enough for me. So, so now it's on to some of the, the tiniest little aerial parts that go on the outside of the aircraft. Uh, th there's a couple more intakes for the, the top of the fuselage, just ahead of the vertical tailplane. And then there's the absolutely tiny, tiny little parts, uh, little small aerials. Of course, they're the ones that are in danger of getting knocked off through the painting process. So careful handling is required, but it's much better to get them on at this stage than to try and attach them later. And that's the refueling probe attached. So now there's a tiny little kind of tail rail type aerial that goes on the top of the fuselage. Again, just a little bit of extra thin, a couple of dots, and that gets sealed down pretty well. Uh, and then the final part is attaching the center refueling point. 
So I decided to leave the horizontal tailplane off uh, so I could get the, the filling done on that as a separate part. It makes it easier to handle and manipulate. So this little section of the video, I, I've actually slowed it back down to real time. So I can show the complete filling and sanding process for this. So a little bit of masking tape, squeeze out a blob of Revell model filler. Uh, which, uh, as I said in previous videos, I actually get good results from this. Uh, it doesn't, if you use it properly, the shrinkage is not too much of a problem. It tends not to react with the paints that I use, which are mainly acrylics, and tends to produce a, a very good, smooth, sandable finish and, and seems to blend in quite well. So I'm just using a metal uh, carving tool which just gives you enough kind of manipulation of the, the small amounts of filler to press them into the gaps. So here it is just the final remnants of an attachment point, uh, which I need to remove with a scalpel, which is quite easy to do. And as for the, the front section, just get that filler pressed into the gap, try and get it smooth as possible. Uh, leaving it a little bit raised because it will shrink a little bit. Uh, and then trying to make sure that, you know, not too much detail is obscured uh, obscured, and it avoids too much uh, restoration work later on. Plus, the more filler that's there, that, you know, it's the more, more sanding work to be done to clean that up. So now I'm just kind of going around looking for any other parts on the, the, the top side that need to be filled. There's a small little seam line just at the front of the horizontal tailplane, but it does tend to be one of those areas that's quite evident. So now it's on to filling the gap that was left between the, I suppose, the bottom half of the horizontal tailplane. Which is, this is a rather obvious little gap on the underside. But again, it's just a case of a little amount of filler, get that squeezed into the gap. Uh, there are a couple of panel lines here, but they'll they'll get easily remedied uh, later on with a scribing tool. So just a relatively small amount of filler, as little as possible. But then obviously you need to consider that it will shrink a little bit. So you want to make sure that there's enough there to have something to sand away to bring that surface flush. So that's it for all the, the filling on that horizontal tailplane. And now it's back. Uh, about two hours later, the filler all seems dry and it's now time to start filling it. So uh, I think this is a 220 UMP thinny stick. It's a reasonably coarse. Uh, it's been well used, so it's it's probably not the full 220 grit, but certainly it makes quite short work of this filler anyway. So it's just a case of working, working your way around. Uh, in this case, I also spot that there is a small seam line on the part as well, so that's taken care of at the same time. Uh, I think this is now uh, possibly 600 grit. We'll just get rid of those kind of deeper scratches. So now for some of the tighter little angled parts, uh, I'm just going to cut off a small rectangle of 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper. And in this case, I'm actually going to use a dry, but just fold it over, get a nice little edge to start cleaning away the remnants of the filler down in those little corners. So apologies for being out of shot. Obviously, my focus was on the part more so than on the camera. As you can see, I'm just using that edge, the folded over sandpaper, just to get in those little amounts of filler in around the the edge of the the transition.
So again, sometimes just a little bit of sandpaper like this is uh, is what's needed. Uh, could have used something like a UMP customizable sander. The the risk of using the the larger uh, sanding sticks or a thinny stick is that you take away a lot of the detail as well. So as always, just let the sander, let the sandpaper do the work. Um, particularly with something like this, like a 600 sandpaper, it will make reasonably short work of that. So as per the top, I've spotted a small seam line on the bottom of this part, just making sure that that's eliminated. But also making sure when I use the sanding stick that I'm actually curving around to make sure that I don't get any significant flat spots. Because what you do want is a nice round component that's been completely flattened off by, by sanding. And just to make sure I come back with a UMP uh, buffer. Quite a nice fine grit on it. And that helps just do the final clean up on this part. Again, I'm just making sure that there's no remnants of that seam line remaining. Uh, because I'll be using a uh, UMP primer, uh, that, that will actually almost kind of microfill some of the, the sanding uh, sanding scoring marks. So it's, it's not always necessary to go to the buffer. Uh, some of the, the higher grits will be absolutely fine uh, once it's covered with, with UMP primer. So, so it's almost a kind of a constant process of keep going around, checking what you're doing. It's also a case using your, you know, using your fingertips to feel your way around it as well. Your fingertip will give a lot of information as to how smooth, whether it's still a, a step or a gap. So now it's a case of moving on to the aft section where it's been filled. using the, the higher grit, sorry, the coarser grit to make sure it work of the filler. And of course, you can just use a brush, in this case, to old makeup brush I got from my wife. Just quite useful for just removing that sanding dust. Makes it easier to see exactly what's what's been removed and what remains. Again, it's a combination of the sanding stick, small amount of sandpaper, folded over onto a nice fresh edge, and get it down into that corner. I mean, I thought it was worth you know, for this section to at least slow down this particular kind of filling process showed in a little bit more detail. But saying that, I swear the rest of the build so far there's been hardly any filler used. A little bit on the intakes, one or two small little spots, uh, one on the nose as well. But this particular part was definitely the worst. And even the amount of filler here was just to close up a fairly small gap. The buffer is used again just to get a good look and see how that part is coming out. Brush off the dust and see what it looks like. And 
that looks okay. So now it's on to removing the excess filler from the underside. And that should hopefully disguise that gap almost completely, actually. And also considering it's on the underside, it's, un it's unlikely to be seen. However, as with all things modeling, I know it's there. Uh, there's also a little bit of a seam line along the leading edge where the two parts joined. Uh, that didn't really need any filler, just needs a little bit of cleanup as I go along. In fact, it's actually that seam line join that would be probably the most visible part. Uh, or at least a visible seam if it wasn't addressed. It would look quite obvious, even, even in this scale. So working away through the grits, uh, using the sander to kind of roll around the leading edge, make sure that I don't lose any of that detail or that shape on the leading edge. You don't want it flattened off at all. And then back to blend out some of the, the coarser sanding marks. And then it's just a case of repeating that operation on the other side. Uh, coarser sanding stick, remove the excess filler. Again, towards the leading edge, it, it's you want to roll that sander around, make sure you don't square it off too much. Especially on this leading edge. Just knock away that, that slight little kind of raised seam line that's ended up. Brush away any excess. And then back with a, a finer grit. So I decided to go back over with the buffer just to clean up the worst of those kind of scoring marks from the, from the coarser grits. Also run it back over some of the leading edge just to make sure I'm happy that that profile has been has been kept and it's not been flattened away too much. So that all seems pretty good. So, so now the next step is to basically restore uh, the panel lines that have been filled in a little bit. And that's where I grab this Tammy Ascriber. Uh, first, I'm just basically all I'm doing is removing some of the sanding dust. Because that will sit in the panel lines. Now, what I tend to find is that actually if you use it, uh, particularly on panel lines like this, if you use the back side of it, it's it's... You get quite a bit more control. It's easier to stay in a straight line and it also scores into the filler a little bit. Uh, sometimes that's enough to restore the panel line and sometimes you do need to run uh, the point along that panel line. But these are reasonably shallow panel lines anyway, certainly on a 144 scale, so we don't need to deeply gouge out uh, any kind of massive panel line detail. So let's just carefully run that along where those original seam, those original panel lines were. Get them nicely restored. And basically it's a case of repeat that for the other side.
using it that kind of forward flat bit, uh, running it forward in that direction, I think you do get a little bit more control. I think there's always somewhat of a risk going the other direction that the, the blade can skip out of the panel line, particularly when they're shallow like this on a 144 scale. So that's it. That's that part complete. And now we're, we're basically on to the, the, the final little step, really, which is to actually get the horizontal tailplane attached uh, to the rest of the airframe. Uh, so that's done. A little bit of Tamiya extra thin. Just let that run into the gap. And in this case, actually grabs quite quickly, get round to the other side, and exactly the same. Just run a little bit of extra thin into that join line. Then it's a case of just make sure the part is firmly in place, and then check to make sure it's, it's aligned. So now it's time to start the masking process. Uh, so I'm using some Tamiya masking tape on the canopy and just burnishing it down around the canopy framing and using a brand new scalpel blade just to score out those areas that I want masked. Uh, brand new blade just makes it very easy to basically cut around the framing and then literally peel off the remaining bits and what I want masked is, is covered up. Uh, same kind of process around both sides of the canopy. Uh, for me, th this method works absolutely perfect. Uh, it's fairly quick and easy. And certainly saves the expense of buying a the like of a canopy mask set. So just work your way around each of the windows. Sometimes the corners don't quite cut clear. So in this case, I've missed one of the small little windows. I just go back with a small piece of masking tape that came up. Put that down in place. So now originally I did paint the air brake uh, area silver and I was going to mask them up, but actually I'm going to paint them afterwards because I think the masking uh, will be easier that way around. But I am going to fill the exhaust areas with a little bit of foam just to stop paint getting in there. Although I'm not too worried about the very edge of the, the exhaust outlets. I'll go back with a fine brush to touch that up at the end. Because uh, it would be very difficult to kind of mask around those parts. And that's basically everything that's masked up before priming. We just need to mount the undercarriage doors and air brake doors on crocodile clips. And that's it for part three. So thanks for watching and please give a like and subscribe. I'll see you in part four.